Ah, Creepshow Art. It's a name you've probably heard of at least once in your lifetime. Now for those who don't know, Creepshow Art is, or rather was, a popular YouTuber who was known for her commentary videos, her storytime videos, her art videos. I don't really give a fuck, I'm just reading what's on the script. But recently, things for her have been going on a downward spiral. She's lost 100,000 subscribers, being talked about in a negative light, and has overall disappeared from the internet. But you might be wondering, what caused this downward spiral? What caused Shin to leave the internet? Why is she being lambasted? And more importantly, what's her backstory? So strap in, my homosexuals, as we take a look through Creepshow Art and how one woman's delusion was ultimately her downfall. This is the history of Creepshow Art. Creepshow Art is someone that, you know, I consider a friend, or at least consider a friend. I don't know where uh, she stands with me now. Creepshow Art is likely the person behind this. However, this is all allegations. Once upon a time, I was a fan of hers until I stopped my support of her. So it's time for me to set some ground rules. So initially this was going to be done in the format as my History of Nickelodeon's video. However, due to Shannon being a person and not a network or a company, uh, that had to be scrapped. So what I am going to do, I'm going to talk about every single drama that Shannon's managed to get herself into with the short amount of time she's been on the website and point out a pattern within the dramas. Also. I'm not going to be going too in-depth in some of them, since if I did, we'd be here all day. Also, when I reach the current drama, I'm not going to be going too in-depth into that, just reading things that are on the surface level. And the reason for that is, I'm going to be doing a retrospective, and going in-depth now would kind of defeat the purpose of the retrospective. Also, it's way too much to go through, and we'd probably be here all day if I did that. These videos are supposed to be like 40 minutes, not an hour. Anyway, let's just get into the video. Shannon Margaret Campbell, better known online as Creepshow Art, is an American YouTuber known for her commentary, her art, and storytime videos. Now, within the short space she's been on the website, she is already a controversial YouTuber, but we'll get to that eventually. But first, let's talk about her career. Shannon created her channel on April 4th, 2016, and started uploading videos on March 20th, 2018, starting out making storytime videos and subsequently other miscellaneous content tours, art raid series, and then rants over her footage of drawing pieces of artwork. Her first video is titled, ADDICTED TO PORN! Storytime Creepshow Art Shannon herself has been involved in a number of controversies such as Hopeless Peaches and Anision and again we'll get to that in just a bit. Now Shannon has been cited as an inspiration of several YouTubers such as Nani and Prison Make Luke. One of which is not really an inspiration anymore, but again, we'll get to that later. So we've gone over surface level information, so now let's start to dig a little deeper. Let's talk about Shannon's personal now, life. Not much is known about Shannon's childhood or Shannon's upbringing. However, we do know that Shannon was born on May 13th, 1993 in the United States. Which state? Which hospital? Nobody knows, and frankly, me, nor everybody else, does not give a fuck. Now, she lived in her van with her husband for years and recorded early videos inside there due to alleged homelessness. Emphasis on the word ALLEGED! Now, she lives in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's her current residence. I don't know where, so don't go looking for her. As bad as a person she is, don't harass her. We've gone through things that are on a surface level and we've gone through things that were on a personal level. Sort of personal because as I previously stated, not much is really known about Shannon's personal life. At the time of me recording this, Shannon's sister has basically been doing Q&As with everybody and answering everyone's questions. So while we do have a little about Shannon's personal life, it's not that much to cover in this video. So now what I'll be doing is going through the controversies that Shannon was in. And as I said, I'm not gonna be going too in depth in some of the controversies due to time consumption and not just time consumption, but I was gonna do a retrospective on the current drama that's going on right now. So again, it would defeat the retrospective if I went way too in depth, like right now. So let's just start talking about the controversy.
Now, Creepshow Art claimed that British actress Jamila Jamil was faking her disabilities, despite the fact that this came off to many as ableist, so her subscribers criticized her. Shannon also allegedly spread misinformation about a drag queen spreading revenge CP and nudes in a situation where victims were coming forward about her friend's alleged sexual misconduct. In the video, she spoke about drag race drama and provided the misunderstood evidence despite nowhere, and when I mean nowhere, I mean nowhere in it was any form of nudes or sexual content. Tara Christine Taylor's video exhibited Shannon of decluding about several people such as Jacqueline Hill's father and would use, you know, the simple phrase she always says, I'm just joking as an excuse as justification. Now, Shannon accused YouTuber Manga Common of being a sexist, reasoning that he didn't swear in her present. She took the fact that he didn't swear in front of her due to the fact that she was a woman, and he lightly assumed she couldn't handle it. A lot of people thought Shannon was overreacting and, as always, being petty. Another time, she said that Hopeless Peaches was racist because she had an argument with Omnia, who happened to be black. Shannon said, Peaches was trying to make herself look like an innocent white girl, despite the fact that Peaches never even mentioned race. Now, initially I was going to leave this out in respect for Hopeless Peaches, but then I realized that one of the main contributors for the drama privated, unlisted, or deleted all his videos in regards to the Hopeless Peaches drama. And that wouldn't be a problem in itself, but then he tweeted out that he was going to make a larger video, which wouldn't be a problem, but he's already going to have a biased perspective of the drama and think that he's some angel and some victim. Now, let me preface this by saying Hopeless Peaches is not an angel. Nobody on planet Earth is an angel other than these four and nobody else is these four. Still though, to try to compare what Peaches did to what Shannon did is completely ridiculous and to blame her for everything is also in itself ridiculous. So it's time for me to do what I usually do with bullshit and call it out. So let's start talking about the Hopeless Peaches drama. On December 1st of 2020, Shannon reportedly tweeted out, Before I hit 100k, I was friends with another creator. This creator later spread lies about me, told people I was psychotic, and I screamed at her and basically poisoned potential friendships with other people in the art community. In another tweet, she called out Peaches directly, writing, This tweet was about Hopeless Peaches. Finding out that she had told multiple creators who I knew that I admired that I screamed at her and attacked her when I viewed her as a little sister. Fucking sucked. After Shannon came out with her experiences with Prismate Luke, another fuckface that I'll eventually get to, this encouraged multiple other people such as Omnia, Woman Weiss, and Avrona, and Camila Cuevas to make claims against Peaches. A lot of these claims have been debunked by several YouTubers including Harley TBS, Just Stop, Just a Robot, Mally Malware, and of course Peaches herself. Hopeless Peaches responded to the allegations made against her by several YouTubers including What Creep Show Art tweeted. On March 18th, Hopeless Peaches made a second and final response to the accusations, which pretty much further debunks Shannon's claims. Now, hearing Peach's side of the story changed a lot of things, like the fact that several of Creepshow Art's screenshots were essentially fake. Even Shannon's former friend who wrote the document exposing Peaches called her out. Her response to the Toby video was also criticized as she never owned up to her past actions and is terrible at researching, similar to another guy. Hmm, often leaving out context and important information. Again, this seems similar to another person I know. Shannon also claimed that Peaches leaked her phone number but just stop proved her as a liar. Despite being outed as a liant in this drama, she has shown stubborn behavior and has refused to acknowledge any wrongdoing, even going so far as to still defend Prismate Luke. Oh yeah, she also falsely accused Peaches of doxing. Glad I clarified that. 
With the leak of the low-cow post, Emily tweeted, This just needs to be said. This woman has tormented me for years and years. I know her because my ex-boyfriend dated her after me. I moved out, but she continued to harass and stalk me. And attached a note app post where she detailed how Shannon harassed her. The Twitter thread went on to read, The fact that she's saying her stalker did all of this to frame her is fucking hilarious because she has literally been making fake Emily Artful accounts all over the internet for years to try and cancel me over the most random shit. What's even more fucked up is she'd fabricate this drama and then make sock puppet accounts posing as her viewer concerned and then would send me the screenshots that she took. When she first started out doing YouTube, she would deliberately copy my thumbnails or titles, then message me under a sock puppet account saying, Oh my god, Creepshow is copying you! Egging me on to attack her. But guess what? I never did. I very politely asked her to maybe change her title, but also said that it's her channel and she can do whatever she wants with it. She was very nice in response and agreed to change it. Mind you, had no idea who she was at this point. Then I guess she went to Lokal to claim that Emily Artful is bullying a small creator with zero proof because, as I said, I was very polite. Then she screenshot that post and sent it to me under another sock puppet. I didn't put two and two together for a long time. Emily has stated that Shannon and her boyfriend, Anthony Parker, have stalked her over three phones and three laptops and she is gathering the evidence. Many fans remember that her second video was about her ex-boyfriend's ex-girlfriend who stalked her and they have speculated that the ex-girlfriend is Creepshow Art. However, Emily later said on Twitter that it wasn't her and someone else. On June 12th, Emily uploaded a two hour long video where she chronicled the abuse and harassment Shannon and her husband had put her through with evidence. This included threatening to release compromising images of her from when she was 15, threatening the lives of her children, mocking her for being an uh, addict, making Twitter accounts with the sole intent of gaslighting her, and getting her fired from her job as a receptionist by claiming she was a prostitute and they were her clients. Emily also revealed that Shannon's husband, Anthony Parker, had gone based while she was unconscious. As you guys know, I have to use substitute words, else YouTube's gonna hit me with one of these or this. Shannon had met Anthony at their job and they chose to voluntarily be homeless. Which is why I said emphasis on a legend. Now, the homeless thing was done partially to fuel Anthony's ego. Sorry, did I say ego? I meant his dreams of becoming a wannabe rock star for his band Ayla, which was formerly named Meteor Shower. Despite Shannon claiming in her earlier videos that being homeless was something that she was forced into and made her life miserable. Emily also noted that Shannon called her stalker Amy, which sounded like her real name. She also claimed that she was jealous of Amy, that she dressed like a goth, and that she would bring toys to her house through her window, which sounded like she was describing Emily. Shannon had previously stated that she wanted to keep her husband's name secret due to privacy reasons, but Emily's revelations made some theorize that it was to ensure her reputation wasn't stained by marrying a rapist. Now, according to Emily, what started the feud between the two was when Anthony recorded a song which involved a segment of Shannon singing, and she had insulted Shannon's voice calling it weak. By the way, weak is not an insult, it just means either you need to sing a little stronger or it means that you try to make your voice less pitchy. Overall, that's not an insult, though if what Emily's saying is true, then it just shows how insecure Shannon is. Anyway, this fueled them to hack her Facebook and release her personal information, despite her later begging them to leave her alone and apologizing 
they ultimately didn't. Now, Emily ended the video by saying that she wasn't scared of Shanna anymore and there was nothing she could do that could hurt now, her. When Emily announced that she was exposing Shannon and her friends, they both deleted their social media accounts. However, at the time, Shannon's TikTok was still up. Also, her YouTube was still around, though she hid her YouTube so it was impossible to find. Now I have to filter everything. Now, many people such as Cat Blage, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Just a Robot and Harley TBS expressed their sympathy under the exposed video. Meanwhile, Shannon's own video about her stalker was flooded with comments calling her out and was mass disliked. Her latest video was similarly mass disliked and had comments from her former friends such as Nani stating they were ashamed of her. Now, Shannon has not responded to the video though she has still been deleting videos that mention Amy even after the video dropped. Shannon deleting videos in regards to Amy makes no sense because Amy's not the person's real name, therefore by law this case would ultimately be thrown out because again, Shannon didn't refer to the person as their real name, they referred to the person as Amy. Meaning Shannon's obviously lying and there was no Amy to begin with. But let's say hypothetically, Shannon's innocent. Seriously, by no way am I saying Shannon's innocent. There is way too much evidence against her to conclude that. But let's say hypothetically she is. This would imply that Amy is not a pseudonym at all and it's the person's actual name, which means Shannon has been using the person's actual name, which um, not only makes Shannon an asshole, but it implies that Shannon's putting a family at risk. So, good on you, Shannon, I guess. Man, you are not, let's, listen, if you are innocent, then you are not smart at all. You're kind of brainless. Now, an alleged former classmate of Shannon's corroborated Emily's story, saying that Shannon would brag to them about harassing Emily and gloated when Emily once said that she wanted to delete her channel. He also described Shannon and Anthony's relationship as toxic, despite Shannon insisting it wasn't. Alright, so it's time for me to talk about Shannon's subscriber milestones, and I'm even going to talk about declining ones. Reason being, I hate seeing YouTubers who do scummy things, who have no remorse for those scummy things, go unchecked. And fortunately, Shannon got her comeuppance, so now we're gonna look at her subscriber count and we're gonna laugh. Please note the following, these dates are from Social Blade, so dates may vary by one or two days because of time zone differences, yada yada yada. Let's just get into reading this. Now 100,000 subscribers was achieved on July 14th, 2019, then a year later, 200,000 was achieved on March 1st, 2020, a couple months after that on September 5th, 300,000, 400,000 two months later, and 500,000 subscribers as of May 20th, 2021. And after all of that, it completely got dashed. Below 500,000 subscribers recorded on June 7th, below 450 recorded on June 12th. June 15 twice it dipped and finally below 400,000 subscribers as of the time of me recording this meaning she's at like 397,000 yeah that's it that is like a major dip I expect that dip to happen within a couple of weeks or a couple of months not in a matter of days then again Shannon's audience kind of got fucking tired of her after the whole peaches drama so them unsubscribing is completely understandable time of me recording this Shannon now has 367,000 subscribers making her the third highest sub loss per percentage wise that puts her behind pro Jared and James Charles uh, I did not expect somebody to lose that much subscribers in what, a month? I've never seen somebody lose almost 300,000 subscribers in 4 weeks. It, it amazes me. Now, I feel like people didn't go in on Shannon because they were her friends or they associated with her in the past or something along those lines. I'm none of those people. So I'm going to spare them of doing that and completely going on Shannon and I won't be holding back any punches. 
Kenan, in no uncertain terms, you're a garbage human being. I never thought I could meet somebody comparable to I'm Alex, but you came around and completely changed my perception of the guy. Let's ignore all what you did to Emily for just a second and pretend it never existed. You still shit talk to your friends, and if it was just regular shit talking, I wouldn't really have a problem, and this wouldn't be blown out of proportion. But you use derogatory terms to describe your friends while shit talking them. That's pretty terrible. That's not commendable at all. Not to mention you're doing it on an anonymous forum filled with strangers. You're shit talking your friends to literal nobodies. Are you kidding me? And not to mention you're doing it on a website that is known for busting people who do scummy shit. So not only are you a terrible human being, you're completely brainless too. I think the worst part about this has to be that there are people still defending you. I don't think they understand the severity of what you've done. You've literally stalked a person for years, almost successfully drive them off the internet. You've caused mental strain on hopeless peaches, which is just fucking terrible. You've shit-talked your friends and used derogatory statements against them. You've doxxed your own family members, putting them in absolute danger. Other than you addressing it and trying to at least clear your name. You run away. You pull a Shane Dawson and disappear. Where have you gone? Cause I don't know. Fuck you, Shannon. And fuck everything you stand for. Fuck the people who are defending you too. Because it seems like they're also brainless. I don't know what's going on, honestly. Why would you do all of this? No sane human being would do all of this. Never had to yell on my channel like this, but after everything Creepshow Art has done, I don't even know if I have a choice. She does things that actively hurts people. I don't know if she's not noticing that. She hurt Hopeless Peaches, she hurt her fans, she hurt Emily Artful, she hurt her friends around her. Like, jeez, and she even hurt her own family member, her own sister, her own flesh and blood. All for what? Nothing. I don't get it. Creep show art, I hope you don't come back to the platform. And if you do, you better address everything. Because like Shane Dawson, you ran and now you can't even be found. Alright, so even though this is the end of the video, I still have a lot of things to say. Try to bear with me, I'm gonna move as fast as I can. Yeah, there is no way that Creepshow Art is innocent. There is way too much against her to say otherwise. Because, let's pretend the Emily Artful situation did not happen. Let's pretend it never existed. The Hopeless Peaches situation happened and those local posts happened. So, yeah, you'd still be a bad person even if Emily Artful didn't come out. So, other than the retrospective I'm gonna make, this is my only video on Creepshow Art. As a matter of fact, this is the only video I'm planning on making about Creepshow Art. I'm not gonna milk this. Retrospectives happen after the drama's over. And it's gonna be a while before this one ends. At least I think this one's not gonna end for now. So I'm not gonna make any more videos on Creepshow Art. Also, please note this is a history video. I didn't just talk about one topic, I talked about multiple topics and multiple things she was involved in. If you give me any more information on the whole Creepshow art situation, I'll put it in the retrospective because I do not have the time to go over it in this video. And that is the end of the video. Now I'm gonna do some quick plugins, don't worry, this shouldn't take long. I have a Discord, the benefits of this Discord is you get to say the N-word, not the one ending in hard R, but the one ending in A. The only time you get to say the one ending in the hard R is if you're gonna make a Boondocks reference or some joke involving it, so long as it's not directed towards anyone. So make sure you join that, the link will be in the description. I have a Twitter where I say random shit for 10 hours straight, so make sure you go follow that. I also have a Twitch account. Currently I'm not uploading there yet, and that is because at the time of me recording this, I'm doing my end of year exams. Yes, I know, Jamaica's weird. Just wait until July, I'll start uploading there. So make sure you go follow that in the meantime. All that being said, this is Tales of Enigma. I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, peace out.